So I so, think uh, um, basically when you said about, especially this program, uh, Lindo, uh, I remember it's uh, very highly competitive. I know that because, um, I mean, who would not uh, dream to meet so many Nobel laureates in one podium or one platform, actually, I would say. And I think this is dream, um, uh, let's say, reality for many, many young people, youth who would like to, you know, really hear, not only hear, I mean, it's like you were just a, a party with friends. You are there with them. So all the time you are there. And uh, so you just can, you know, jovially share the breakfast with them and ask them questions which you never really trust yourself to ask in a big conference, isn't it? Absolutely. You are, you are perfectly right. And I would like to share an anecdote, um, an incident that happened over there uh, so that you can, uh, so you can actually uh, realize how, how much fun, how much fun it was. So actually all of us, we were really, especially I was just an undergraduate medical student that time. So, you know, uh, we have that um, hindrance, there's an inhibition as to how we are supposed to speak to such big scientists who are Nobel laureates. Uh, but it turns out that they are really cool. I mean, they are really very friendly. Um, they really speak nicely to you. They, they explain things They explain things to us in a language that we would understand. Mm -hmm. So not that it was very difficult because for a person like me, of course, I was at a very, very young stage, mm -hmm. an undergraduate stage. Um, of course, I don't understand much even now, but that time it was even less. And there was an incident where we had a barbecue in the evening in Lindau. We were sitting nicely on the banks of the Lake Constance or the Bodensee. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to this Nobel laureate, Sir John Walker from the UK. And he was, uh, so he worked in mitochondrial metabolism. So which has been a dream, like a fantasy for me right from the first year of my medical school. Uh, so I was speaking to him and... Uh, he just calmly told me, uh, call me John. I mean, mm. of course, I was calling him sir. As yeah, Hindu, of course. Or, yeah. As any Indian does. Um, so I was like, yes, sir. And he's like, call me John. And I was shocked. I mean, yeah. I couldn't imagine a Nobel laureate telling an undergraduate 23 or 22 year old student that call me by his first, call him mm -hmm. by his first name. So this was something uh, really surprising. Uh, I still couldn't do it, by the way. <laughs> I kept calling <laughs> him sir or Professor Walker. Uh, that I couldn't do, but, uh, but then it was also very interesting that he actually accepted my request of having lunch one-on-one -on -one with him the next day, oh. where I could spend one and a half hours exclusively with him one-on-one -on -one while having lunch and talking to him about his research, learning from what all he did in his life. And I think this was one of the most special moments of the Lindau Nobel laureate meeting in on physiology and medicine that year for me. Maybe some points um, as a defining moment, one call it, right? Maybe some things you probably have yes, picked up, absolutely. which still you today you uh, remember because of that, you are doing like that. No, maybe. Yes, Yuri, you're perfectly right. I mean, and I think one of the biggest offers, apart from the science, they are great scientists. They are the great clinicians of physicists of and the humility. And if those people can be so humble, uh, then we should be also. True. Absolutely. You're right. Um, Patal, just going back a bit, um, during your school days, um, how was it? Um, was something biology per se was always your field or... Um, uh, it's not it's not something that you are so let's say interested and later it came or uh, how was it or there was some motivation within the family friends or people whom you know that you always wanted to be uh, a doctor by profession or how was it can you just give paint let's say your school days so um that's a good question actually uh, very interestingly Till I was about nine years old, or no, even more, till 11 years old, I really wanted to become an automobile engineer. So uh, my father is a mechanical engineer who works, who worked a lot in the automotive and manufacturing industry. Uh, my uncle is an automobile engineer. So that always fascinated me, working with cars. Uh, but then what was a, what was a completely life-changing uh, uh, moment for me was when I went to the Kanha National Park with a group called Pugmarks. Uh, this is in Kanha is in Madhya Pradesh. And that time I actually experienced wildlife for the first time in an open forest. And that is what led to my interest in biology. So first in wildlife 
and this interest actually eventually evolved into genetics and biochemistry um and actually my family there are no doctors yeah. so there are no doctors in my family uh my, only my aunt um, has done uh, she's uh, she was the head of microbiology in one of the colleges in pune yeah. and my grandfather was a chemist so he worked on aspirin and salicylic acid but apart from that there is absolutely no connection to medicine in my family but this time going to kanha national park was the defining changing moment for me when i got interested in biology and then the interest evolved going into genetics and biochemistry and finally medicine that is how uh, the journey was okay so um let's put it other way around um if because we all know how the um, competition for medicine is um it's same everywhere even in india because of the population it's even higher but in germany also it's not different you have to be the top 1.0 you need to get for the school which is like rarely two three people in whole of a place can get actually so the the competition is everywhere it's the same in in different context of how many so um if you would not have become a medical professional what would have been your next choice that's uh, a very interesting question actually so uh, i have two answers for this um and firstly i should really thank my parents for the great support my parents and my sister have been very supportive of whatever i've wanted to do uh, so if i would have still been in sciences i would have probably gone into genetics or wildlife biology which were my interests um, as before however an alternative profession for me could have been the arts where i would have taken up languages uh political science uh, maybe and i would have continued playing the tabla uh, singing and doing dramatics because those are also activities i have been learning tabla since i was in the 6th standard so um i'm quite inclined towards music and dramatics also so that would have been a completely different line of career which i might have chosen had, I, th- had a- i think you are not far away you have chosen hanover <laughs> as the right destination you know we have one of the very uh let's say uh, renowned university of uh, music um in hanover actually yes. um and so uh, your passion certainly and uh, i mean we have to hear more about your tabla um i think that's still missing but also political science i mean um yeah we we, we are more than happy if you can join uh, politics also i mean still you can do it i mean there are many doctors who are also politicians you know Uh, there are few yes. who are also now in the news very often regarding corona as well who are now so anyway i am um, very interesting uh-